Uh, maybe I'll point out some other things on the 2.1 thermostat is right here. I've got a video for that in order and how to, how to replace it. It's quite easy. Four, four bolts, as long as it comes apart nicely, just lift the housing, take out the old thermostat, put in a new one, close it back up. Uh, thermostat comes with a new uh, O-ring seal. Throttle body, there's a throttle switch underneath it. There's a little set screw. That's the adjustment screw, sorry. That's the set screw. The adjustment screw is right here. So you loosen this one first. Then you turn that one uh, until the idle point where it clicks. So you would have to open the throttle first, listen for the click. And that was a spring action there. You can sort of hear it. So if you, if you move the throttle, and you don't hear a click make sure to move it farther just to give it give it to some some people over adjust it and it doesn't click until you've got quite a distance here but ideally you want it to click just as it as the throttle begins to open so what you do is you if you don't hear the click loosen this loosen that set screw then turn the other one they're both three millimeter you need a long three minute three millimeter allen wrench or something like that and you just turn it. If you can't get it to click it, no matter how far you turn this thing, uh, remove the whole throttle body, turn it upside down, and then you can do. There's an adjustment that you can make. Uh, one of these days, I'll I'll make a video about that, uh, and then you can get the throttle working again or the throttle clicking working again. Math sensor, obviously, uh, removing this cover lets you see the um, carbon track here or the circuit board. Look for white worn out spots that can cause running issues usually at idle or at a certain cruising speed uh, the carbon track wears through and you can have hesitation bucking stumbling at specific engine loads alternator power steering pump water pump is removed right now i have a video on how to remove it on a 1.9 and 2.1 fuel pressure regulator these guys sometimes stick uh, causing 100 psi of pressure uh, in terms of not dumping any more pressure back into the uh, system, into the gas tank. This is the return hose. Um, so checking fuel pressure is quite easy on these. There's a 7mm screw right here. You remove this screw, put your fuel pressure hose on there with the fuel pressure gauge, start the vehicle, or you just bridge the fuel pump relay, and then watch your fuel pressure engine off. You should have about 40 psi engine running down to 35 because of the vacuum vacuum here it attaches to the intake manifold down there um, what else uh, there's a coolant bottle here this is the main coolant reservoir there's a cap that's supposed to be on here and it attaches to this hose um, it usually sits like this this uh, coolant reservoir should usually be full to about the maximum mark and that's the one that the customer slash the owner should usually check and top up. Uh, if the cooling system has a leak that is too great in terms of um, uh, when you shut the vehicle off and the coolant contracts and it cannot develop a suction uh, or a, a vacuum, then the, no matter how full this coolant reservoir is, the coolant will never get sucked into here and then you just continue losing fluid in terms of fluid dropping, the, lower, um, the level dropping. That's the fluid level sensor. Once it gets below halfway here, the bottle, this sensor will trigger the coolant light to flash inside the dash. And uh, ideally this bottle should be full right to the top all the time. At minimum, maybe down to about here, three quarter full. Uh, and then that's a healthy system and like I said once the coolant gets hot if it's over full too much pressure the cap vents it into here and then as the coolant cools when the engine's off overnight as the coolant cools it contracts and it'll suck coolant back into here so it's a constant back and forth which is quite normal on these vehicles um, but and like I said uh, the fluid level should it, should, it can fluctuate between minimum and maximum, but you should not have to keep adding fluid on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. Um, it's just like brake fluid; you should never have to add any. So if you if you keep adding, if, if you find yourself always adding more fluid to this bottle, you've got a leak somewhere. So and it is an extensive system, 17 liters, because it has to go all the way to the front of the vehicle, and it comes all the way back here. So that's pretty much it. Um, Power steering fluid reservoir right here. 
obviously the oil f uh, oil filler neck right here. There's a dipstick. What am I missing here? This is power steering. That's the vacuum pump. This is the actuator. So when you set your cruise control, what did I say? Power steering pump. That's cruise control. That's power steering. Sorry, blonde moment. It's been a long day. So this is your uh, cruise control vacuum pump. That's the actuator. So when you set your cruise control, it pulls a vacuum on this, which opens up your throttle. And then it just, as your cruise control operates, it does the throttle operation for you. This is the PCB heater. Heater, that's the PCB tower. There's a valve in here or a diaphragm. It's supposed to open and close, open and close. And that's how it controls vacuum. Or, or sorry, the, the, the way the engine breathes, recycles the PCB. Over time, this diaphragm breaks. Uh, and then you have constant PCB fumes going through here that can affect running issues. Uh, these towers are harder to find these days. Um, and the other common thing is this hose usually collapses over the years the oil soaks into it and it gets weak and spongy and then the hose either cracks and causes an air leak or it collapses in which case because um, you can have oil leaks what happens is as the engine's running there's a vacuum here the hose collapses and then pressure that's building up in the system can't go anywhere so then you have oil leaks because the pressure get is find, finds a separate way or a different place to get out uh, so keeping the pcb up to snuff is a good idea uh, what I sometimes do is, if uh, if the hose is weak, I, I take a different hose and I put it on the inside, uh, a stiffer hose, and then that keeps it from collapsing. Uh, coolant breather pipe or bleeder pipe goes all the way around the engine bay. That helps bleed the system. And uh, getting back to the thermostat, there's a valve here that you open up. I usually leave it in the open position so that when, once you fill coolant, uh, air can go up through the bleeder hole into the bleeder rail and into the reservoir here. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, long video with a lot of rambling. If you have questions about specifics, just let me know. Uh, and like I said, I try to answer as quickly as I can and as accurate as accurately as I can. I'm not perfect, so uh, that's that. Oh, one more thing. O2 sensor wire is green. It's a coaxial cable, meaning there's uh, there's an inner cable and an outer, or I should say wire. Of course, it won't come apart now. Come on. And usually what happens over the years, you can see here, that's the inner cable. There's an outer, and you can see the, the copper wires right there. And what happens is, the inner one flexes and then this this green sheathing breaks and then this copper wire that's on the outside here touches the inside signal wire the outer one is grounded to engine ground or body ground and when this this guy touches this guy what happens is that the computer sees a low voltage and then it causes the car to run rough because the engine over fuels it tries to get, it adds fuel to try to get a high or a rich signal from the O2 sensor, which is this wire. Um, so first thing you, you do is when you get, when you have any type of running issues, black smoke at idle, rough running, peel this, uh, push this connector back and check to see if these two are touching. If they are, all you have to do is you have to cut the outer sheathing of the outer wire and then move the, uh, cut the, the shield wire so that it doesn't touch the um, the part that's broken on this wire or what you do is you obviously cut that wire and put a new connector on it and so that there's there, there's a new clean connection okay that's a lot of info to take in you might you guys might have to watch this video a couple of times to ingest it all or digest it all thanks for watching